Now, the report into how Penn State officials handled the Sandusky child sex abuse scandal is complete and it is scathing in its criticism of top to bottom leadership at Penn State, including legendary football coach Joe Paterno and three other top school administrators. The investigation, headed by former FBI Director Louis Free, it uncovered emails that show university officials, quote, considered reporting Sandusky to police as far back as 2001, but ultimately decided to conceal the suspected crimes after consulting with a head coach, Joe Paterno. Although concern to treat the child abuser humanely was expressly stated, no such sentiments were ever expressed by them to Sandusky's victims. Free's eight-month investigation found that the most powerful people at Penn State, and let's go through them. We're talking about the president, the vice president, the head of business affairs, the athletic director, and, of course, Joe Paterno, those four, failed in his words to protect against a child sex predator and, quote, exhibited a striking lack of empathy for Sandusky's victims because they were more worried about bad publicity. Um, I want to bring in our panel on this. We've got Dominic Carter, political journalist, author, Ed Till, radio talk show host, and our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. Now, guys, I'll make it clear. Um, reputations have been destroyed. There'll be lawsuits, I guess, in, in excess of $100 million of payouts to the victims. Um, and uh, there could be legal exposure for some of those I involved in this as well. Forget even civilly, who knows, maybe even criminally. Um, and Joe Paterno's name here will always carry a stain forever forward. That said, I got a big problem, more so than maybe I really processed it until I read the report that came out today. If running through that tunnel to 100,000 screaming fans in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania, and if you've ever gone to a game there, what's called a whiteout, where all the, uh, all the people in the stands decked out in white you know, T-shirts, it's really a sight to see. If we are Penn State rings out and the players were on the field, players who had nothing to do with this, imagine you're sitting at home and it was your kid or you were one of the abused. And you say, for what? A check and there's no shame. There's no death penalty as the NCAA who's looking into this might apply to them. There's no punishment. There's no football. And again, I know the people that will be victimized by this will not be the offenders. But still, I got to tell you, I didn't feel this way until I read the report today. But I feel that way now. They should not be playing football at Penn State. I believe, at least in 2013 and maybe even beyond. You see our toll-free number at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, let me get your takes from around the table. Dominic, you don't agree with me. I don't. I, I don't understand. It's horrific, disgusting, uh, and every other word you want to use for the behavior that occurred at Penn State, from the president on down. I'm not saying scandals at other schools are as high in nature is what happened at Penn State. But this happens all the time where athletic directors not look the other way. No, 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 no but this. it does. It does. No, it happens a lot more. Not the systematic abuse. Literally, you read the words and, and your skin crawls. Grooming. Sandusky, a pedophile, and no one else was alleged to be a pedophile in this ring. He groomed kids and brought them on campus. It's horrible. There was, uh, at one point, and I'm going to uh, read here off the page, so bear with me. Uh, in the free report, he talks about at the football building, okay, where Sandusky brought the kids. And again, I'm not talking about 17-year-olds, and that's horrific enough. I'm talking about kids sometimes under 10, under 12. This is what allegedly happened, not allegedly, that happened that uh, one visit. The janitors witnessed what I think in the report is the most horrific rape that's described. They see this firsthand Sandusky raping a child. And what did the janitors do? They panic. A janitor observed this, said it's the worst thing I ever saw. This is a Korean war vet who said, I've never seen anything like it. It makes me sick. I can't sleep. He spoke to the other janitors. They were alarmed and shocked. But what did they do? They said, we can't report this because we'll get fired. They knew who Sandusky was, and they compared it to going against the president of the United States. And the report says, if that's the culture at the bottom, my God, what does it say about the culture Richard, at the top? But let me ask you a question. I understand how strongly you feel on this, but if you cancel the entire football season, you will cripple that local economy in Pennsylvania. You're right. 
So the whole town, the entire community, should be punished for this pedophile? But who, who caused the fact that this punishment would come down? Joe Paterno and the leaders of the Penn State uh, University community are the ones who would be responsible for any ruination of Penn State. Let's be clear about that. This activity was deliberate. This activity was known by adults, even the janitor. The janitor was scared enough not to dial 911 anonymously and drop the phone and leave the pay phone hanging somewhere. So the uh, amount of influence on people coming from that high up does but, mean the university all, but itself. But we all know the influence. They, that's the same influence at every major no, college. No, Dominic, yes, I've, it never, is. I've never, and I know we've seen what's happened uh, allegedly over decades at Horace Mann and other schools where there was abuse. But in this particular case, the one distinction is you had a football player or then a coach who went to the coach and said, I saw the guy raping a child in the bathroom. He feeds it up the food chain because God forbid no one would say, let's call the cops and do it. Not the guy who witnessed it, not the coach who was told about it. He then goes to the AD. Think about this. You see a crime against a child. You go to the head coach. You then go to the, the athletic director. Of course you do. Wait a minute. It's protocol. Of course you no, do. No, you go to the cops. The Cleary Act says <laughs> it's protocol. That, that's, that's what the, the law, law says. Oh. But they have their own rules about okay, these major yeah. universities. Yeah. My point here. That's why I don't think Penn State should play next year or maybe even the year after that. It's because okay. it's because that culture. But Andrew, that, wait, wait, if you're an incoming freshman yeah. on a football scholarship and your whole life is based on playing sports, is it fair that you're penalized for what this horrible is it, is uh, pedophile it, is it fair did? That, is it fair that kids or anybody shows up to work and all of a sudden the company's out of business and they don't have a job? Anymore? I mean, things like this happen. It's unfortunate for those kids. They would have the ability to transfer to another school. But, but no, it's not that simple. But once you sign up one no, school, NCAA, you no, lose your eligibility. Even emergency but waivers. Here, but here's my concern. It's that culture that you're talking right. about that's at every single school. It's, it's winning, every single it's school. It's winning above all else and, and so, that's and that's so, something new so who knows that's but, new but on the, we didn't but think it extended to this level yeah. it, it's something if this place got shut down and it's easy for me to sit in a nice air-conditioned studio and talking about what's going to happen to as you said a whole community not just the school but if that happened do you think that the culture that's so pervasive you talked about your years at Syracuse who had its own uh, problems with it's Mr. Bernie Fine. Okay, Syracuse. do you think another school would say and another board by the way a board of trustees who was so asleep at the switch that the idea that the athletic director and the coach are so considered the power brokers at the school not anyone else and they talked about humanely treating Sandusky who who they were told was raping children and allowed to come back on campus the idea that everybody, that another school would permit this going forward.